In this video, you will learn how to use Hyena's Active Task component to create Active Directory users from an external text file. These new users will be created in this organizational unit. Let's demonstrate how this process works once everything has been configured. Don't worry about the details at this point, as later in this video, I'll go over step by step on how to set this up. This particular task creates 100 user accounts. To do this, first open Hyena's Active Task module, select the task, open it, then validate the task. Once everything validates without any errors, run the task. We use a web-based service to create this input file. So if any of these names belong to real people, it's just by chance. Almost done. Okay, looks like everything was imported without any errors. Now, if we refresh our OU contents, you can see the new user accounts that were created. Next, let's see how to set up this task from the beginning. One of the primary items to plan when creating user accounts this way is to determine which directory fields or attributes will be in the input file. I create a special view to show the newly created accounts and their attribute values that are going to be imported. Some of these attributes are required and some were selected for this video demo to show common problems, errors, and other requirements when performing bulk operations. For this directory task, we will import and set the value of the display name, the first and last name, the pre-Windows 2000 name, or the SAM account name, the logon name, also called the UPN, the employee ID, and the job title. We can import these attributes in any order and display any customized view, which in Hyena is called a query. To learn more about creating custom queries, view our video titled Hyena Active Directory Query Basics number 201 on our YouTube channel. Finally, one additional directory element that is required when creating any object in Active Directory is the name, which is in our first column here. Since the name attribute cannot be directly set, Active Directory instead requires what is called the Relative Distinguished Name, or the RDN, to be specified. Let's use an example to help explain it better. All directory objects have a unique path or address. Let's look at all of the directory attributes for one of our new user accounts. The distinguished name attribute will have the full unique path of the directory object. The first portion of this path, the part that starts with CN equals and is followed by the name, is the RDN value. This RDN value is what is needed to create any directory object. The RDN in turn will be used to populate the name, which as you can see here is the same value. We often get asked by customers what they should provide for this RDN value. And this is most easily answered by using whatever protocol you use now for naming your directory objects. It might be last name, space, first name, or in this example, we used first name dot last name. Just view the existing format that is present for the object names in your directory and use the same naming convention when specifying this RDN value. We'll go over this again when we actually configure this task next. First, before we create this task, we need to remove our new user accounts that we created earlier so that we don't get errors from having duplicate accounts. We'll select all, delete, confirm. And now that our accounts have been deleted, 
we can create our task. We'll select the active task function, then click new, and enter the name of our task. Set the task action to create Active Directory objects and click OK. The Task Properties window will appear, which is the main dialog used to set all task properties, validate, and to execute the task. Make the window a little bit bigger. First, we need to set the class of objects to be created which in this case defaults to user, which we'll leave as is. In the create in field, you can either specify the container to create the objects in, or the target container can be specified as a field in the input file. In this case, we'll set these new users to be created into the active task OU. Next, we need to set our input file properties. The input file can be any text file which has each field separated by a unique field. In this example, the input file is tab delimited, which is the default. The input file location, in this example, is located here. The edit button can be used to quickly open Notepad to view the file, which we'll do later. The data qualifier is used if the input file data is surrounded by quotes. We'll demonstrate how to use this feature later as well. And finally, the first line in the input file can be skipped if it contains column headers. The last area needs to be defined or the order and names that are attributes in the input file. As discussed earlier, Active Directory requires all new objects to be given a unique Relative Distinguished Name, or RDN. The RDN will become the name of the directory object once it's been added. The RDN value is represented by a percent %RDN symbol shown here and must correspond to one of the fields in your input file. We'll look at this input file a, a bit later. In this example user import, we have in our input file the RDN, SAM account name, the UPN, first and last name, display name, employee ID, and job title, and in that order. To add these, we'll click on the Insert Field button to begin inserting the fields that are present in the input file. In this case, the attribute category is already set for users so all the attributes we need are in this list. Let's find them and insert them in any order. We can change them here or later in the task properties. If you miss or forget a field, simply go back and add it back in. Now let's reorder our fields. Let's use that edit button to take a quick look at the input file. This is a tab delimited file, and a quick review shows the fields are in the order that is expected. Here's our RDN, followed by our SAM account name, our UPN, followed 
followed by our first name, also called a given name, your surname or last name, display name, then the employee ID, and our job title. Once everything looks good, the next step is to let Hyena validate as much of the task that it can in order to eliminate as many potential errors as possible. We'll do that next. Task validation is performed prior to executing any task in order to find and correct as many errors as possible. First, we'll maximize our task window. Then, to validate our task, we simply click the Validate button. This message indicates that one or more errors occurred during the validation process. Each row has an error indicator, and clicking on any row will show the reason for the error on the status bar. You can also see that 101 input file records were processed yet we were only expecting to create 100 user accounts. We can see here that our first row is actually our field headers from our file. This can be fixed by simply selecting the ignore first line input file option here. The reasons for the remaining errors as shown in the error message is caused by a missing password. Active Directory requires that new user accounts have a password. There are several ways to specify a password for new accounts. One method is to add the password to the input file, which would have to be used if a different password were needed for each account. To do this, simply add a new field to your input file and then specify the password in the attribute list. To do this, we would select the Insert Field button change the attribute category to special AD symbols and add the percent password percent symbol to our attribute list. Another method is to set the password in the task properties. Select the options button, click on the password options, and then specify one of the password options. Here we'll set a password for all new accounts. Now, let's revalidate our input file. We can now see that everything validated without any errors. So at this point, we could execute this task and import our users. First, however, let's force some common errors into this task and see how they are captured during the validation process. To do this, we'll open our input file in Notepad and make some changes. First, let's make the employee ID really long. Then, we'll put some quotes around one of our input fields. And finally, we'll add an extra tab character to our data. Now we can rerun our validation and see if we have some new errors. The row with our long employee ID received an error, as we can see here, and on the status bar message, the input data exceeded the maximum length allowed for the employee ID of 16 characters. We can also see that our row with too many input columns created an error. We can see that the SAM account name is empty and the remaining data has been shifted over due to the extra tab character. Finally, be careful when the data is enclosed in quotes. 
As you can see here, the quotes are treated as valid text and won't produce an error, but this can be fixed by setting the data qualifier to the quote mark. Let's fix our input file now and then revalidate. Now you can see there are no more errors and our quotes have been removed. Since everything validated without errors, it's time to run this task. To do this, simply click the Run Task button. Any errors found at this point will be shown in the same way on this main task window. It's always a good idea to perform a new task with just one or two test accounts to make sure that all the input values are what you expect. Our task completed without any errors. So if we close these input windows and then refresh our OU, you can see the 100 accounts that we just created. Thank you for watching this video and to give us the opportunity to show how easy it is to create Active Directory objects in Hyena's Active Task. Watch our YouTube channel for new videos on Hyena's Active Directory management functions.